Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm Mr. Atfield, every day, and I'm going to be talking about cars. That's just a fancy word for cars. Uh, I want to start with a story. So, when I was 16, I got my beginner's driver's license. Uh, it was really exciting. When you get to drive for the first time, it's exciting, it's powerful, it gives you freedom. Look at that thing. When I was 17, I went to the other side of Canada. Uh, I was fixing houses, was doing some good work. And they gave me this white van to travel around in. It had painted windows. It looked like I was going to kill some people. It was a scary van. I actually got in my first accident when I was using this van. I hit a truck in a parking lot. Not a big deal. But it taught me that there's a responsibility when we're using cars. We're trying. So, since then, I've been using trains, planes, automobiles to travel all over the world and explore. It's been a really good decision, I don't regret it a second, and it's a big part of my life now. I think everybody wants to travel and explore. Okay. So, today I'm talking about cars. Uh, I'm not so interested in expensive cars or cool cars or how cars work. Instead, I'm interested in how cars have changed and impacted the world. I want to look at, and most importantly, mass automobility. The desire for cars that started and has continued today, that people want to drive and the freedom that cars give. So, little history lesson. We go back about 100 years to the turn of the century. At this time in the world, uh, radios and other technologies are connecting the whole world. They're using electronics to connect the whole world. There's a lot of really rich people, there's a lot of really poor people, and those poor people can't really use these technologies all that much. But the world is developing. And then came this car, the Model T Ford. It's a cool car, it's black. Uh, Henry Ford invented this car in 1908. Uh, how we did this and why it was important was because of the, the assembly line, the factory that was used to make this car. He made a factory that could basically make cars. This made cars very cheap because you could make them very quickly and efficiently. So how did this change the world? Well, for one, now just regular people could own cars. That's big. Now lots of people have cars. But this did a lot more to change the world. For one thing, it changed jobs. Henry Ford, when people are making his cars, paid uh, $5 a day, which is a lot of money back then, just for factory work. Anybody can do factory work. So other companies started to compete with Ford and had to start paying people more money. This made it so that there were the rich people, the poor people, and now kind of people in the middle who aren't rich, aren't poor, and, but they can buy cars. It changed our environment. Roads started being built everywhere. Now you got cities planned and designed so that roads fit, cars work. Houses changed. Now houses need to support cars and have a place for cars. Supermarkets, the way we get food, uh, farming changed, and now instead of small markets where you buy different foods, all the food is transported to one big store where we can go and drive there and get our stuff. Fast food. Fast food took the same assembly line, factory style, that Henry Ford created and applied it to food. So now food is getting faster, just like the whole world is getting faster. Drive-in theaters. Uh, you could drive your car to go watch a movie. And a lot of movies were about cars. You could watch a movie about cars from your car. Change your entertainment. 
the point of all this is that it, it changed the world in many ways. Our jobs, our environment, our food, our entertainment, and it gave people freedom. Those teenagers up there, they got freedom. What they did with their freedom. <laughs> but the importance is mass automobility. It gave people the personal freedom to travel and move. It gave people power. And this was very important. Everybody wanted this. They still want it today. Car culture is still very strong today. One example is there are seven Fast and Furious movies. Pretty good. But seriously, cars are a big part of our culture. They're in our movies because, one, they're really cool. And two, for these characters, they represent power, freedom, excitement. Kind of like when I was 16 and I started driving for the first time. I was excited and I felt free. And that's the feeling that our movies and those cars are trying to recapture. Cars are crazy, big business too. There's many companies around the world that are selling cars, dozens. They're selling millions of cars each year and it just keeps getting bigger. Cars are really popular. Today in the future, uh, the next step that's happening is that Windows. Uh, Bill Gates did the same thing that Henry Ford did. Henry Ford made average people get cars, and Bill Gates did the same thing with computers. He made it so that average people could have a computer. And when he did that, about 30 years ago, the world changed again. Now there's thousands of satellites in space connecting us all. The way we get food has changed. We get it on our phone. The way we shop. We get it on computers. The world changed again because of this technology that's connecting us all. It comes with problems. Global warming is a big one. Global warming is really hurting the planet. Uh, and cars are a big problem, a big reason for this. They're creating lots of pollution. Just like how cars were a responsibility for me when I got into an accident, they're also a bigger responsibility for the whole planet because it's hurting our planet. It's hurting it for the future people who are going to live here. So what can we do? How will we continue to move things but try to reduce the damage we're doing? Because we can't get, just get rid of cars. We can't stop. Our whole world is built using cars and this transportation communication technology. So what can we do? First one, uh, we got to move spaces in different ways. One idea I saw online was mobile offices. I don't know why it's glass. I guess it looks cool. But it's important to move our spaces. Uh, we already do a lot from our cars, but it's not safe. So there's going to be different ways to do that and increase our efficiency. There's going to be self-driving transport trucks, drone delivery, self-driving cars. That's going to make things more efficient and it's going to reduce the environmental impact because of efficiency. Electric cars, everything's going to have to go electric. In the future, I know where it's going to be electric and my kids are going to ask me, why did you guys used to burn gasoline and create pollution? And we're not going to have a good answer. Maybe because it was easier. We're not going to have a good answer. Ride sharing and car sharing. So one person, one car, it just doesn't work. we got to start sharing if we want to see improvements in problems like global warming. So, in conclusion, um, I encourage you guys to take advantage of this technology, this automobility that that's afforded to you. Take advantage of your ability to travel and go up there. For me, when I started traveling the world, it changed me so much. It gave me so many learning opportunities. It made me grow as a person. It taught me so many lessons. And I'm much better off because of it. So you need to do the same thing. You need to go out there. You need to take advantage of these technologies. You need to travel and discover whatever you need to discover. Thank you very much. Thank you.